When you think of honeybees, you might think this. Or maybe this. Or maybe you feel this. But there's so much more behind a bee than just its stinger. In fact, we can learn a lot from honeybees. Let's head inside the hive. You're probably wondering what all those bees are doing. The answer just may shock you. There are three different types of bees in every colony. In simple terms, a colony is a large group of bees living together in the same hive. The smallest and most common type of honeybee in the colony is the female worker bee. The next in size is the male drone. The drone is not a worker. This lazy bee barely lifts an antenna. <laughs> the largest and single most important bee in the colony is the queen. Well, you get the idea. There are three main parts of the bee. This is the head, this is the thorax, and this is the abdomen. The bee also has many small parts. The proboscis acts like a tongue or straw from collecting nectar. The antennae are used to both feel and smell the bee's surroundings. There are two sets of eyes. Two sets of eyes? The two compound eyes allow the bee to see which flowers have nectar. The three simple eyes help the bee see the sun even on cloudy days. Our bee also has two sets of wings that allow her to move forward, backwards, and sideways. The honeybee beats his wings 250 times per second. The bee has three sets of legs attached to the thorax. What? Six legs in all. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey! Each set of legs has a different job assisting the worker in collecting nectar and pollen. The back legs are the most important because they have special baskets to hold the pollen the bees collect. Finally, the bee is covered in hair. The tiny hairs help the bee do one of its most important jobs. Pollinate! Whoa! Why do bees have so many parts? Worker bees need every part of their body for the many jobs they do. The worker bee timeline. Let's start from the beginning. Egg. Larva. Pupa. Adult. Worker bees live from six to eight weeks. For the first three weeks of life, adult worker bees are called house bees. At this stage, they do many jobs within the hive. In the first one to two days of life, the worker bee's job is to clean the cell. Their next job lasts from day three to day five. At this stage, they feed the bee larvae, bee bread, and bee milk. This helps the larvae grow to strong adult bees. What is that all they eat? Well, bee bread is actually a mixture of pollen and honey. The queen bee larvae receive a special meal called royal jelly, which the workers make inside their bodies. What? Back to our timeline. From day 6 to day 11, worker bees get busy feeding adult drone and queen bees. From day 12 to day 17, worker bees become construction workers. But instead of hammering nails, these bees are busy building wax honeycomb in food store sales. Finally, from day 18 to day 21, worker bees live out their last days in the hive being security guards. But how? They're just tiny insects. With the same body part that gives them their bad reputation. The Stingers! Protecting the hive from hungry predators is an extremely important job. But don't be fooled. The worker bee is not done. Only the work as a house bee is complete. After three weeks as a house bee, 
workers will finally leave their hive to become field bees. Nectar and pollen collection. The worker bee uses her compound eyes to find flowers with nectar in them. When she spots a flower full of nectar, she knows it's time to get to work. Using her proboscis, she sucks up the nectar into her honey sack. Later, it will be delivered into a cell in the hive by house bees. Pollen from the flower will stick to the bees in tanny and little hairs. She then shakes the pollen into pollen baskets. These are located on the back of her hind legs. Later, this tool will be delivered into a cell in the hive. On returning to the hive, the field bee passes her load of nectar to the house bee through her proboscis. The house bee transfers the nectar into special honey cells one drop at a time. She spends the next couple days fanning her fast wings over the honeycomb. This helps remove the water from the nectar. Other house bees then cover each cell with a thin layer of wax so that the nectar can get all and become honey. But wait, the field bees aren't done there. If they found a good patch of flowers, they need to tell the other field bees where to find them. But how? They dance with my map. Huh? It's time for the waggle dance, y'all. Well, not quite like that. The waggle dance is actually a series of precise circles and runs. The dance tells the bees exactly how far from the hive and which direction to find the flowers. Wow! You may be ready for a nap after witnessing all that work. But, wake up! This is the most important part. Pollination. When bees are out in the field, they do more than just collect nectar for honey and pollen for bee bread. They also do something called pollinating. Let's back up the tape a little. Ah yes, right there. Remember when our honeybees were busy collecting pollen and nectar from the various flowers? Yes! Here's what's really happening. The pollen that stick to the bee's hair and antenna moves with the bee when it flies to other flowers. The pollen then drops off the bee onto the new flower, helping the new flower create a seed. This is called pollination. The bee also pollinates the flowers of fruit and vegetable plants too. Without this pollination, the fruits and vegetables will not be able to grow. Pollination allows different fruits and vegetables to grow properly. That's right, folks. Without bees, some of our favorite fruits and vegetables would not be available at all. Oh, no! Wait a second. If there wasn't any bees, there wouldn't be any apples? Yeah. That's right. What other foods can you think of that would be gone without bees? Grapes, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, tomatoes. Wow! Not only that, but we need bee honey and bee wax for many everyday products. For example, bees wax can be found in skin creams, hair products, shoe polish, and lip balm. And honey can be found in our favorite foods such as 
sweetener for bread, cheese, and cookies, as well as an antibacterial for the body. Wow, bees do so much for humans. How can we make sure our bees are happy and healthy? Well, let's get to know the one bee that is responsible for the future of every hive. Well, first of all, in every colony, there's only one. And that single bee is the only bee in the hive that can lay eggs. Oops! Because of this, queen bees are the reason a colony can keep growing. Can a colony survive without the queen? No. In fact, a colony can't survive without its queen, its drones, or its workers. Wow! But because there's only one queen, every worker bee knows that in case of emergency, her first priority is to protect her queen. There are even 12 worker bees who have the special job of taking care of her. They guard, feed, and clean her. Wow, she is special. Those eggs must be very important too. They sure are. But keep in mind, the queen cannot make these eggs without help. Worker bees make eggs too? Actually, this is the one job the worker bee doesn't do. The role of helping the queen produce eggs belongs to those lazy drones. Wow. Once the queen heads out on her mating flight, it's up to all those drones in the neighborhood to chase her down. Like a rice? Kind of, yeah. The drones have eyes that are twice as big as the eyes of the worker and queen bees. These large eyes are used to spot the queen on her mating flight. The drone bee that catches her will then also be responsible for the survival of the queen's colony. The mating drone, while sometimes considered lazy, is also extremely noble. As soon as he has mated with the queen, his job is over and he dies. Oh no! The queen lives the longest of any bees. She can live between two and seven years. So there you have it folks. The queen, the drone, and the worker. Honeybees working to keep their colonies alive. Wait, we're forgetting someone. Oh no! Who could that be? The beekeeper! How could I possibly forget the beekeeper? Beekeepers are humans who have special jobs, just like our honeybees. They help bee colonies by providing them with hives such as this one. They make sure the hives are kept warm in the winter and are close to flowers in the spring. Beekeepers use smoke to relax bees while they're collecting the bees' honey. But don't Whoa. worry, beekeepers are hoping to keep these bee colonies happy and healthy. That way, we can have all the fruits, vegetables, and goodies that we all know and love. Even if you are not planning to become a beekeeper when you get older, there are certain things you can do to keep your local bees happy and healthy too. Don't bug the bees! Be, Be kind! Be, Be kind!
And now we present Sava's Baby. Yeah! I grew up out of my cell, a female worker as well. Men's of sisters will tell how we work hard every day. Inside the hive as I crawl, I build hexagon walls. I do the most though I'm small. It's the worker me way. Compound I show with flaps I neck to flow and get my proboscis going. Now we're making honey, baby. Hey, friends, you need us. So don't be crazy. We make you honey. So save us, baby. Hey, friends, you need us. So don't be crazy. Don't be crazy. We help your father. 